Welcome to Business Amplified with host Kevin A. Dunlap. This podcast is for small business owners aiming to amplify their enterprises. Explore strategies to play a bigger game by becoming an author, public speaker, podcast host, or expanding your brand in other ways. Elevate your business on Business Amplified. Hello and welcome back to Business Amplified. My name is Kevin Dunlap and today I have a special guest. We, we met on a on another uh, podcasting uh, platform where uh, hosts and guests get to exchange information. I can't wait to uh, share some of the stuff we're going to be learning from, from our guest today. Our guest today is Don. Don, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, Jeff. Uh, Kevin. Sorry, I, I apologize. <laughs> Oh, no worries. I've, I've had a brain farts and stuff like that before. And I've even <laughs> did a, I used to have a podcast called Life's Little Lessons. And I had a lady by, by the name of Sabrina on the show. And we were just re- recording the introduction. Thank goodness that this was a pre recorded show because I just butchered her day wow. <laughs> to the point where she started, we both started laughing. Like, okay, we're going to have to start all over again. Okay. So it happens. No big deal. Uh, so, uh, Don, uh, tell us about who you are and what is it that you do and why do you, why, and why do, you yeah. do it? Um, well, I am a financial advisor, and uh, you know that's a pretty broad term. Um, you know, there's there's kind of like many many different types of financial advisors. Um, the type that I am uh, is called a registered investment advisor, or RIA. It's a little bit different because there are some advisors that um, have certain licenses and there's some that do not. And, um, you know, what type of advisor you are is predicated on the the, uh, licenses that you have. For example, you could be a stockbroker and call yourself an advisor and you have what's called a series seven. You could be an insurance agent and call yourself an advisor and all you could sell is life insurance and annuities and you just have an insurance license. Uh, An RIA has what's called a Series 65. And that really means nothing to the average person other than in my line of uh, licensing, if you will, uh, I have to treat everybody like they're my parents. Now, obviously, most of my clients are my age or older, but, you know, there's what's called a fiduciary responsibility. And that's why I chose that um, is it, it adds a little bit of credibility initially um, when somebody's um, doing some research on who they're going to do business with and, uh, and why they're going to do business with that person. And when they understand these different types of licensing and they understand that there's different, uh, uh, different tasks that these people can and cannot do legally, um, the registered investment advisor firm has a lot more to offer a client. So that's, that's why I do it. Uh, now, who uh, I am is uh, I'm pretty much a, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a God-fearing guy that just doesn't like to BS. You know, just keep it simple, treat people right. And uh, of course, that sounds like a sales pitch in and of itself. But, you know, that's, that's really what I'm about. I kind of wear my emotions on a sleeve. And once somebody's, uh, you know, in the room with me, we, you know, we, uh, we, we gel or we don't. It's really that simple. It's, uh, I, I like to just treat people correctly and just uh, uh, educate people more so than try to sell them things. Well, I have learned because I've been an entrepreneur for several years, and I was in real estate for uh, sixteen of those years. And my first eight years, I was a real estate consultant. I, I specialized in doing lease option real estate, and then, and then uh, eight years after 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 I was doing that for eight years. I realized I was turning too many clients away. And then I became a realtor on top of that. So that was, I did that for another eight years. Right. And one of the things I realized, that number one, is they're coming to you. They are, they are, or they are usually are are already looking to make a purchase. Correct. I mean, and and then if you're being authentic and, well, with them, if you show them, I'm not trying to dupe you, I'm not trying to do anything like this, right. then they feel more comfortable. And then there's a there's a better chance of them wanting to do business with you or at least continue doing business and possibly even refer you. Is that, is that your experience? It is. And and my business is a little bit different, whereas, um, you know, in, in real estate, uh, you know, it, it's transactional and you're, you're only as good as your last transaction. You know whether you're a buyer's market or a seller's, you know whatever type of uh, contract you're you're 
going in with. But in, in my line of work, you're kind of, uh, you're hoping they're going to use you for an extended period of time. And then, you know, God willing, when that person passes away, you might uh, have the children or, or other uh, beneficiaries that would, you know, utilize you as well. So, you know, you're, you're kind of um, almost having to prove that you're, uh, you're, you're genuine all the time. It's not just that first interview and the first closing and the first sale, if you will. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, you've got to, you, you, you're, they're kind of keeping you like luggage, you know, they're, they're keeping you for a long period of time, you know, and that's kind of the analogy I use with people, you know, you're kind of stuck with me if you decide, you know. Um, so it's, uh, th th that's the part that I actually enjoy, um, I, I, I purposely schedule my meetings with clients uh, vastly apart from like, I don't book one on the hour because I like to talk. I'm Italian, you know, the hands got to move. I got to, you know, and, uh, you know, I like to talk. I like, I like to just, just uh, fellowship, if you will, with people. And um, that, that not only is not part of the sales process, in my opinion, but it's just part of uh, just, just letting people know that you truly care about them. You know, when, when you have somebody come in for a review and you remember the name of their dog, you know, it's like, it's pretty cool. You know, they, uh, they respect that. No, well, that's the same, same is true. Like in real estate, like with Salesforce, something like that, I would often take notes, like the wife's name is this, the dog's name is right. this, their kids are this, or they have at least three kids if I don't know what their names are. That way, you know, before having that second follow-up interview, or maybe this three years later, and they wanted they are needed to change. In your case, they need to change their policy. In my case, they need to upgrade their house or downgrade their house. Sure. Um, that that you can still put that personal touch in there. Right. Right. Okay. And and I would say that that is huge uh, in eating business. It is it is to be personable as well as to uh, to uh, to go that extra mile. It sounds like you you definitely go that extra mile with your clients. Uh, you try to. I mean, you know, uh, some people you know they, they they might make it a little difficult for you to do so, but but you know you know when two people of different personalities are interacting, um, you know, uh, sometimes people like you and they don't like what you're offering. Other times people might love what they're offering, but they just don't connect with you, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's just human nature. That doesn't make it right, wrong, or indifferent. It just, uh, you know, that's where it kind of has this thing where, you know, I've been doing what I'm doing since 1987. You know, um, so, uh, you know, it's kind of, I kind of use the analogy, you know, I'm, 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 I'm too old of a dog to be uh, messing with puppies, you know, <laughs> so, so you just got to learn that, you know, just meet people where they're at and see if you can help. And if you truly want to help, that's the key. Um, that's where you're, that's where you're not a salesperson, but you're an advisor. You're literally advising them pros and cons. I mean, I, I just had a client that, that that left our office and I'm, I suggested they should probably increase gold and silver. I'm a big fan of gold and silver. And he disagreed. And I was like, well, that's okay. You could disagree. You know, I'm right, but we could disagree. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, um, you know, so it, it's okay to disagree as long as it's done respectfully. On both sides of the desk, I I would agree with you as well on that. I mean, th th some of I, I remember some of my uh, cl uh, closest friends. We would disagree uh, quite not I want to say adamantly, but uh, we were definitely in the opposite sides of the of the coins sure. of, to each other. But it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't affect the friendship? Right. It's just like, you know, right. exactly. you agree with this. I don't agree with that. So so what? It, it, it's funny because you know you're you're in real you were in real estate and. My two closest friends are both in real estate and they're technically competitors, but yet we, the three of us can go out for lunch and, and, and they won't argue. They won't, they respect each other to the point where, you know, they, they realize that, you know, Hey, just because we're in the same business doesn't mean we have to like not get along. So it's exciting actually. Well, it, 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 when you say that, I, I, my specialty in real estate from 2004 until 2012, when I got my license, was in lease option, rent to own, seller financing real estate. That was 
that was That's my very niche. that was my niche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh and I found another guy that did exactly the same thing. Now, wow. from 2004 to 2012, I was doing this without a license, a real estate license. So I I did contracts where hey, you're the owner, let me sign a contract with you where I have an where I have an right. option on the property. Now I now I have an interest in the home. Then let me go find a tenant buyer and then I I signed my interest for me uh, over to them for a fee. Okay. That, that was my that was my model. And I found another uh, another person that did exactly the same thing I did. I mean, this is very very niche. Uh, I mean, I would say most cities probably don't doesn't have somebody that that does that very that very sure. specific thing. And I was doing this in 2004. And what was going on in 2004? Everybody could get a loan. Prices were going up. So like, uh, so I'm in a in a niche market dealing with people that can't buy a house. And like, so I had even more restrictions. But I, I found another guy that did exactly the same thing I did. He was my direct competitor. And you know what we did? We sat, we went to a, a place, had a couple of beers, talked all over with each other. And instead of being competitors, we decided we'd be collaborators. Absolutely. And you both profited. And we both profited. And here's why it was so profitable, because he had, a, let's say he had 15 homes. I had 20 homes. And guess what? By me marketing his homes and we would split the, the, the fee 50-50, um, is that now I've got, I, I basically I've doubled my inventory, which means my, my clients that are looking at my properties, they probably don't know who he is. Or now say, oh, look at all, look at all these uh, uh, all these properties that he has. Now, for the for the from the buyer's perspective, the lease option's perspective, they had you know they have all this inventory going through my company. Number two, I had more more inventory, so that was a win for me. Number three, for the other guy, the competitor, now he's he's making money half to half the fee without even having to do any of the work because I was doing yeah. it for him. And sure. guess what? The, the owner now has, that's the key number four, the, the, the owner now has two people marketing his homes for or, for the exact same commission or the exact that's same a fee. That's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. I mean, it's, and, and if yet, if you would have been like working together under the same EIN, that wouldn't be the case. But the fact that you're mm. opposite and in, in the way you're structured, it, it was just more of a co-op type thing. And, and that's just brilliant. You know, I have, I have some financial advisor friends that don't have the licenses that I do and they, they don't sell some of the things that I do and, and they refer business to me. And then that's awesome. You know, and likewise, you know, like I don't deal with a lot of uh, different types of regular insurance. So I don't deal with like homeowners and auto and health insurance and stuff that everybody needs, but I'll farm that stuff off to a, to a friend of mine. And, you know, we're, we're tech Technically, if you will, competitors, but you know, we break bread together and uh, you know, share the wealth. You know, and if more of that went on in this world, this world wouldn't be so crappy. <laughs> you know, there'd be just a lot more uh, just mutual respect. You know, and I think that's you know, uh, my my the first book I wrote was called "In God We Trust, The Dollar We Worship," and it was all about people worshiping the dollar, and and you could be broke and worship the dollar. It doesn't mean you have to be rich, you know? So it's, uh, it was a learning experience in and of itself. It's, it's, uh, so tell me more about that. Cause uh, how, how many books have you read? Cause you said my first book. So I was oh, yeah, I've, a second. <laughs> yeah, I've written four. Um, and uh, the, the first one was uh, in God, we trust the dollar we worship. Um, and uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of Bible based things talk about like what God says about money. I just always intrigued by that. Uh, the second book was called uh, Five Steps, Your Guide to Financial Health. And that was more indigenous of an actual like, hey, I'm looking for a financial advisor. What should I look for? What should I not look for? Um, we talk a lot about those licenses and things. And, you know, do I need somebody who's a fiduciary? Do, can I get Do I just need a life insurance guy? You know, um, so that was the second book. Um, the third one was really just a, 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 almost like a self-help kind of thing that I I have on my Amazon author page. I think I have it at like 99 cents. It just talks about, uh, you know, what happens when you, uh, you get downsized or you're losing your job. And, and it's like, what do I do? A lot of people have these 401ks and IRAs. They, they, they just leave them where they're at. So this is like, you know, what should I do with my money if I'm changing jobs? Should I roll it over into their plan? Should I roll it over into an IRA? There's a lot of things that, um, uh, 
but people need to know. And that's why I make the book 99 cents. I don't even want to make money off of it. I just want people to be able to be helped. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I can't do it for free on Amazon, uh, but, but, you know, I'm making 99 cents. It's virtually free. And then the one I just released in December is called Awoken. And that's a spoof off of Woke because the kids these days, everything has to be woke. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, when you have a holiday dinner, there's things you're not supposed to talk about. You know, you're not supposed to talk about religion. You're not supposed to talk about the government. You're not supposed to talk about politics. You're not supposed to talk about money. That's what I wrote about. Everything you're not supposed to talk about at Thanksgiving, I put in this book. So if you don't want to talk about it with your mom and dad, you can read the book. So it's, and it's fun because it really does all play together. It does. It's a, it all works off of each other. And uh, that became a bestseller uh, internationally in two weeks, which is crazy because I'm not I don't classify myself as an author. It's almost like a hobby. So it's, uh, it was fun. Do, do you give your books away or sell your books to, or give yeah, your books to your clients? Kind of, yeah. It's kind of like a real expensive business card. You know, I mean, they, they, I, the, 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 you know, it's funny. There's I, I, the first one I learned from this mistake though. The first one I was just given all, of them, you know, hundreds and hundreds of them. And when I started seeing the books that I gave away, unused bookstore websites for like three bucks. I'm like, really? You could have just given it to somebody. I gave it to you. So, um, you know, I, I think differently now. And I realize that, you know, if, if somebody actually does pay a couple of bucks for a book, then at least they got some skin in the game. They're probably going to read it. Um, and it, it changes things though. I mean, it's uh, it shows that somebody's genuinely interested, not in what I'm saying, but in the topic. So um, I, I stopped doing the giving away for free. Now clients, I will. And, and a lot of times if I do a seminar, I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll give away a few and then uh, have door prizes, et cetera. But, you know, it's, uh, I, I don't know. Some days I'm an author that, that's a financial advisor. Someday I'm a financial advisor that's an author. It depends on, uh, depends on who's sitting across the table from me, I guess. Yeah, that's funny that you say you've written four books because I've also written four books. Awesome. Um, my, my first book was on, in 2015 and it was on lease option real estate. I mean, okay. and the funny thing is that book sells more frequently in the UK than it does in the US. I Yes, my, my most recent one, I was, uh, I, I sold in Japan, in, in the UK, in Australia and in Canada like more than I did in the United States. So I, 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 I agree. I agree with what you're saying. Well, I'm going to uh, redefine something for you. And I would definitely want the, the, the listeners to, uh, to listen to this because uh, what, what, one of the things that I do is I, I do have a, 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 a book writing uh, program where oh, I, wow. I teach people how to uh, write a book. Uh, it's going to be a, a nonfiction book. It's not, it's not going to be how to write the next Star Wars. I mean, I'm not going to be, I don't tease that. <laughs> um, but the, the thing is, when you become an author, and and, you, and let's assume you've got good content uh, inside that book, do you know where the word author is derived from? Mm, I know it's Latin. It's, it's, well, it comes from the word authority. Oh, how about that? So if you're writing an author and you're talking about you know financial planning, I was talking about lease option real estate. If you you know if and it has good content, now you become the authority on that content. So if Don here wrote a book on financial literacy, and I'm also a financial planner and is you know with the same license, and I don't have that book, Don automatically um, in the people's mind is more of an authority on the subject, and therefore they may want to work with him more. That's and yes, awesome. the book. And yes, the book is a glorified business card. It can be. And yes, sure. you can get one for a business card for under a penny. But then again, if you've got you know a book that that takes, let's say on Amazon, it takes seven dollars to uh, to print, and you're selling it and you're giving it away. But that that uh, that gift means that they're going to do business with you, so they they're going to pay you fifteen hundred dollars. That seven dollars is is a write off. <laughs> That's absolutely the best seven bucks you could spend. I agree. I agree. So my thing out there for those of you guys, doesn't matter what your topic is, doesn't matter what you teach, that doesn't really matter, but go ahead and start putting together a book. If you don't hire me as your business coach or as your book writing coach, hire somebody else. And, well, and that is crucial. If you and I would have met 
before because I've probably spent more money in um, software that's supposed to build a better mousetrap and AI chat GBT stuff, which, you know, um, uh, I'm not a fan. I mean, I know it has its place in society, but it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an old school dude, you know, I, you know, I, I still like fax machines, you know, people laugh, but, uh, you know, a fax machine cannot gobble up your social security number like an email can. So, you know, <laughs> that's that just, <laughs> Well, and that well, I must admit, I've never really had a fax. I did for a couple of years, way way back in the day when I was first getting started. Um, mm. You know, when, when you're in real estate and you need to send a contract, email was still not. Uh, it was yeah. kind of clunky back then, and file sure. sizes was, uh, and you were too big. And oh yeah, and you got yeah. you have to press hard because it's in you know it's a four copied uh, document, and it would get all gumbled up when you tried to scan it. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I, I, I understand the, the, the old fax machines. Um, so, uh, uh, Don, uh, since we're de de dealing with uh, entrepreneurs that are probably listening to this show, this that's what we would have scared for. What would you say you as a business owner has been one of your biggest uh, challenges? And then how did you overcome that? Well, you know, ironically, our, our, our previous uh, conversation we just had seconds ago dovetails quite nicely into this. The... Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, I always say that, uh, you know, every, you know, who King Midas was everything he turned, he touched, turned to gold. Well, when it comes to technology, uh, a lot of times, everything I would say I'd be was, uh, King Midas is negative. Okay. Because, uh, everything I touch, you know, so technology was always the challenge. Um, and, and it's not that I was unwilling or unable to learn, um, it, it, it's a funny story. There's a, there's an actual, uh, enigma that exists where certain people have a, um, uh, an energy that is emitted from their bodies that actually disrupts electronic devices. Now you and I, prior to starting this exact podcast, um, I had an audio issue on my end and we had to go to, a, I had to go to a different uh, format and that would just time that just shows you exactly. That's what I face. <laughs> there's a, you know, um, it, it, there's people in my office that just deal with the stuff that's, well, that's computerized. That's, you know, that's why I said, I like fax machines. You stick it in there, you put it in the file, you call it done. But um, you know, so my biggest challenge had to be in the area of technology and I, I don't mean like email that's pretty simple and or googling or, or or it was the the servers and the cloud and and backing things up and and you know when you when you're dealing with the uh, things in the securities world uh when you got the sec uh licenses well you know they're they're real big on on the data and where it's stored and how it's stored and how it's backed up and is it current and that had to be the biggest challenge. Uh, and to some respect, it still is. Um, you know, there's, there's there, uh, the electronic. I mean, for, let me put it this way. When, when, when you and I were kids, we're probably around the same age. When you and I were kids, technology doubled. I think it was every like three years. And then that has changed to the point where now technology doubles almost every week. I mean, doubles every week, you know, even the whole AI chat GBT thing. I mean, that they're already on their, their like third or fourth version since I first heard the words chat GPT. And, and, you know, and I've played with it. I've, I've, I've downloaded stuff and I've tried asking it questions and stuff. And, and, and I just got into an argument with it because I started talking about politics and, and it was, it was fun actually, but uh, you can't get chat GPT to argue with you, by the way. Um, <laughs> But it's uh, it, it's exciting <laughs> when you see like the kids where they know where all this stuff is going. Um, but like, you know, folks in our generation, when we start to, you know, start to semi retire and retire and the next generation is coming in, I think the biggest challenge I face is, you know, most of my clients are my age you know, are, are roughly my age. And I need to find somebody who's, oh, I have, but I need to find more people who are younger, who want to have the same uh, business ethics and, 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 and desire that I have, but yet it's going to have to be with the, their version of technology. 
you know um mm -hmm. you know the baby boomers don't want to hear about you know uh i'm going to upload this to the cloud and you're going to have to download it and sign it and upload it back up to me that 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 just they want to drive over and sit in front of you and 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 ha you hand them the pen you know uh covid was miserable and for my industry um now the kids that are up and coming they were fine because you know the whole zoom thing the first time i heard zoom i'm like wait a minute wasn't that a tv show for kids when we were kids you know and the first time I was or, or that zoom one car call, zoom zoom <laughs> exactly you know first time i was on a zoom call I'm like wait a minute this looks like the brady bunch what in the world is going on here so you know it, it, it is the 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 technology is is um you have to keep up with it no matter what or it'll pass you by so i would say that you know was and still is uh the biggest challenge for in my not i'm not gonna say in my industry but for me personally and i can understand where you're coming from because my father uh at, at the time of this recording uh passed away about two and a half three years ago and uh, he was completely technology. Let's just put it this way. When he passed away, he still had a flip phone. Ah, there you go. My dad's 90 and in a moment. He has a flip phone. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when I called my dad uh, and, uh, and I wanted to talk to him and he didn't answer, I didn't leave a voicemail because I didn't think he knew how to check voicemail. Well, to put it in perspective, my, my dad... Uh, when cell phones first came out, now you're talking about people that lived during a depression, so they, they view money differently than we do. But um, when, when cell phones first came out, and if you turn that thing on and used it, it was costing money. So, so he only used it when he wanted to make a call. Um, he went on vacation one time, and they went like seven or five, seven or eight states away, and uh, we had a family emergency and I had to wait till he got there so I could call the hotel and tell him so he could turn around and drive all the way back. If his phone was on, I would have caught him about a mile away from the house. So, so it's, uh, you know, it just, that's a perfect example of, you know, um, mm -hmm. well, this is going to cost money. I'll use it when I want to, not realizing the true benefits of what it actually can do. And uh, sometimes you, uh, it's like baptism by fire, you know, uh, yeah. and then we finally learn. Well, a story that I, I sometimes uh, say, because you talked about you need to adapt to the, the, to, uh, to the new technologies. You can't just ignore it. And it's a, it's a thing that said, let's say you had a bicycle shop mm -hmm. and you love selling bicycles. You know, mm -hmm. that, that was your passion. You know? So watch that kid get his first bicycle or get that, that, that older person. Because now they retired, they want to get some exercise. So they're, they're buying a new bicycle and mm -hmm. you got your bicycle shop. And then this new fad came along. This new fad called the internet. Yeah. And he said, Dang, man, the internet's not here to say it's just a fad. Nobody's going yeah. to the, the, people want to shake people's hands, sign a contract in person. I'm going to completely reject the internet. Now, those people are probably out of business now if they didn't adapt to the internet. Exactly. The same thing to me is true with today with AI and other new technologies. If you don't adapt to it, you are going to get left behind. Absolutely. So if you're not a tax savvy person, guess what? Hire somebody. <laughs> And that's what I ended up doing. And I realized that, you know, um, the, the, this, how's it go? The mother of necessity is, uh, is, is, is the, what's holding you back. And uh, I hired uh, a firm that deals with all of this. I don't want to say junk because it's not junk. In, but the way my mind works to me, it's junk. Okay. So I hired a firm that deals with that. And, and a gentleman that's that's really brilliant and 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 it's funny because uh, he used to be a um, the IT guy for a very 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 large uh, insurance company and um, he he went out on his own and I utilize him for all this stuff and I just say yo Jim fix this and it's funny because his office is uh, probably twenty minutes away from my office, but all of a sudden I start seeing my mouse moving around, and you know, and the gym's in there doing something, you know. And I, you know, I trust your access him. here, but yeah, but he, but he's he's in there working, you know, doing the voodoo that he does, you know. And I don't even know what's going on, but all I know is when 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 I see the mouse stop moving, it's it's fixed. And he sends me a text, "Y'all good there, buddy?" And I'm like, "All right, man." I get a bill, and it's. it's I'm happy to pay that. Are you kidding me? Because you got to you get to a point where you realize 
yeah, you're saving money by not hiring somebody to do it. But what's your time worth? You know, everybody has a dollar value on what their time is worth. And, you know, uh, do, do people want to have extra bills and extra uh, 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 expenses? Of course not. But, you know, if, if, if you make $500 an hour in your business and, and you've wasted six hours messing with an email that takes some kid five seconds to fix, what have you lost? You know, you, you've lost, first of all, you're aggravated. So you're not good to anybody. You're going home and you're just going to have a cup of coffee and call it done. All right. Second, second of all, you're, you're uh, the time you've lost and people need to realize that they need to work on their business, not in their business. And that's, that's what I've learned more than, than uh, anything else is when it comes to, if I, something I don't know, if there's something that I stink at, it doesn't mean I have to learn it. I could just pay somebody to do it. And then I can be the specialist on what I do the best without having to worry about, you know, being the chief cook and bottle washer in my business, you know, have, have, a, do I have to scrub the toilet sometimes? Yeah. Okay. Would I rather pay somebody? I do. But what if they're sick that day? Well, then you, you pick up the slack, but the point is you have to pay the folks that are good at what they do. So you could be good at what you do and your clients see that. You know, like I had, I have this, this piece of software, people can log in and see their accounts and, and somebody says, oh, this, this thing isn't working. Well, I'm not going to fix it. I've got a guy. Okay. So I said, listen, you're going to get a call from Jim. Jim's going to walk you through this. Jim's going to, and it's done. I'm on to the next client, helping them with what I like and what I know, instead of pretending that I can fix something that I know I can't. So that's, uh, that's probably where the success comes in because it mirrors off of the challenge. I've got two stories uh, to kind of uh, back off, go off of what okay. you just said. When I wrote my first book, and, I, and I'm saying this proudly because I learned a lesson. <laughs> and when I wrote my first book, I spent probably six hours a day, probably for close to like, or four to six hours a day, probably close to two, maybe three weeks, trying to figure out how to do page numbers. How do I do the page numbers in Been my there. printed copy of my book? Yep. And then also, what about the headers at the top? I got the name of the book on the left, got my, uh, my name on the right. So it's yep. an odd number, even number of uh, pages. Yep. I spent days uh, trying yep. to figure that out. Because any people say, you just go down, if you just go to Microsoft Word file and turn on add page number. That's how easy that goes. But no, ago, that wasn't because a thing. You were assuming the book <laughs> starts on page one. The book probably starts on page Roman numeral 15, then exactly. 14, 13. Table of contents doesn't have pages. And yep. then, by the way, if you if you're the classic book writer and you can start your chapters on, on the on the right page, um, you will have the page number there. But if your book ends on the left side, you will have a page number. But if you right. don't have a, if it's just white, you don't have a page number. That was like, ah, it's all about chapter formatting. Like, oh my gosh, it's just a page number. And, and I'll tell you what, you know, I, I literally had the exact same experience and I didn't take my own advice. Okay. My, my, I paid somebody to do the internet stuff, but I didn't pay somebody like you to do the book part, you know? And, and what, what really takes it to the next level is my, my daughter, who's our, our middle child. Um, she went to Liberty university and she has a degree in English. Okay. And my own daughter who has a degree in English, I said, here you go, fix this. And she was like, dad, that's, that's kind of messed up. You know, I, you know, I don't know if I can, what do you, what, what do you mean? So, and, and she showed me that, you know, just because here's an example. I love to cook, but that doesn't mean I should own a restaurant. Okay. So just because you want to write, doesn't mean you should necessarily just start writing a book, you really have to have an outline and a format that I would just type and just keep typing and keep typing. And I would put book, you know, titles and, and, and chapters and move stuff around like it was a jigsaw puzzle, which is like an ADHD version of, of, of trying to do something like that. And, and it really, really, really just, um, it was, it was uh, kind of backwards, 
if you will. <laughs> so well, that's the, that's that's what I learned. Definitely, I had to do from there was uh, to uh, make make sure you do you know listen to the experts with the writing and and have your outline and and have your format and believe it or not there's actually templates now that you could put in that will actually do the page numbers and all that kind of stuff automatically so it's uh kind of uh once again technology finds a way well good because I, I know uh in all four of my books they were all somebody else is the one that uh that did the cover design somebody else did the formatting Some of, yeah. somebody else did the formatting into a kindle version somebody else um uh, if i'm going to write a hardback book they're going to have the inside and outside that is that is way beyond me the yep. only thing i need to know is how many how many words are going to be uh, when i'm done how many words are in it yeah because that's going to determine the thickness of your spine because right. if you've got right. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm not going to count them. <laughs> well, and, and the other story I wanted to say, uh, kind of quickly, actually, it's going to be a two-part story. Um, is that the the the, the uh, everybody knows who Gerald Ford was? I mean, he was a, he was a, the founder of, of Ford Motor Company, right? A lot of people think he's the one that invented the car, and he's not. That's right. He's the one that invented the assembly line to make make right. the car easier. Right. <laughs> and he's also the one that uh well he's it was his company not him himself. He he's also the one that made the very first eight cylinder vehicle. Cuz yep. cuz because at that time four four cylinder was was the best they could do but he wanted more power. Right. Now, here's the thing I, I learned about Gerald Ford uh, cuz he he didn't do all this himself. He had a team that did it. I and mean, he was a high school dropout I believe. And somebody says, and uh, I, I need to answer that question. Because he'll pick up the phone, hey, get Bruce in here or get Monica in here. He would just say, I don't know who to talk to. <laughs> and that's yeah. how people should be running their businesses. Exactly. Now, he was also very, very inventive. And mm -hmm. I, I heard about this on, on a story I saw on, on, a, on a documentary on him. Is that uh, he's the one that, uh, uh, the, the, like the seats and stuff like, like that, uh, that was made out of wood. Back then, a lot of things right. were made out of wood. Now, when they were making the seats, they would have these little uh, these little uh, uh, pieces of wood that was left over, even even like say like sawdust. And to right. him, and, and Ford hated waste. He absolutely hated waste. Uh -huh. So he invented something uh, with that wood. Composite. You know what he did? He made the very first wooden charcoal or the wooden uh, uh, bricks uh, for barbecues. Wow. So people say, so if people buy one of his trucks, they would take one of his, take a you know a barbecue thing uh, with them in the back of their truck, take the the, the wooden uh, uh, awesome. the cats, and now he invented the picnic. That's <laughs> awesome! Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So my thing is with with those two stories is, is to think outside the box. You don't have to be the expert. I mean, Don basically just said it. I'm just reiterating it. You don't have to be the expert, but start surrounding yourself with people who are the experts, and don't be afraid to to ask uh, for, for help. Well, that's why a president has a cabinet, okay? Because there's no way he could be good at all of those jobs, you know. And you know that dovetails into a lot of the political stuff that I like to talk about, but. But but uh, but the president's cabinet is, you know, the, the so-called specialists in each of the fields that are meant to advise him. So they go out and each of them have a team and each of those teams have a team. And now we have government waste. But anyway, but the point is there's a, ultimately a bunch of people that can now come together in a room and now they can have a consensus on what is to be done based off of each person's expertise. So it's uh, well, kind of interesting. Just the final decision maker. That's right. That's right. With the veto power, right? With, with the veto power. <laughs> uh, so, so Don, as, as we're wrapping this up, uh, if somebody wanted to talk with you about their uh, their finances, you know, and their and their planning, how can mm -hmm. they get a hold of you? Uh, well, my website is gfs hyphen advisors dot com or if they just googled my last name galade g-a-l-a-d-e um you know uh, most search engines and google and stuff my my business website comes up and um my book pages come up from uh, from amazon uh, or if they just did don galade.com that's the page that's the the site i use to talk a lot about my my books and podcasts and and once uh, once this is done i'll uh, you'll send me a link and i'll put it on my podcast too so 
So maybe some of my listeners who are about to write a book, they'll call you uh, and, and utilize your services too. So it's... Um, well, that's the thing is, uh, if you will be uh, stepping outside your com comfort zone, writing a book is a great way uh, to do it. And again, by being the author and, if, and assuming, again, you've got good content, that right. makes you the authority. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, and by the way, uh, as Don just said, uh, and even it's even true with myself, I make more money from giving my book away for free than I do by selling the book. That's right. For, Amen. For sale. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you it know, sounds I, I, counterintuitive, I, I, but that's because it is your glorified business card. For right. an example, I, I'm going to do my own horn. Let's say uh, Don has a. Uh, has a speaking pl uh, platform that my my ideal clients are are, are going to be at, so I can go I can go there and give away my book at that platform or give them a, a, an electronic copy of the book, an ebook version, which is right. free anyway. Exactly. And 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 now and now I, I could I, I could I close 10, 20 percent of those people just because I gave something away for free. That's right. That's right. And you know I um. Uh, all my clients, um, you know, it's funny because if you're an older person, they they want a physical copy. They like to physically turn the pages and stuff. But, you know, uh, a lot of, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the real, the real uh, uh, old fashioned people want the actual book. But, um, you know, like I'll say, hey, I want to get this for my kid. I'm like, well, here, I'll email it to you. And then you can send it to the kid because they're going to read it on their phone anyway. And, and so there really is a niche for each format, you know, um, uh, there are going to be always going to be people who want a physical copy, but then there's going to be those that even if they, even if it's not a matter of, I don't want to pay for it, they just don't want to deal with the book. They like, they'd like to sit there and scroll through their phone. And, and that's cool. They're just, you know, different formats for different people. Well, there's another format that, that I prefer. And it's, it's going to be the, uh, the audio book. Cause I like yeah. to listen to books when I'm driving long distances. Yeah, and when I was in yeah. real estate, I drove a lot of long distances. But yeah. it may be like broken up by you know ten minute uh, stops at, at different sure. houses. But I, but I, I would just I would just listen to ebooks that way. Sure. And there is technology out there, AI technology out there that can you know, you know after it gets prompted correctly, that can turn your physical or excuse me your PDF version of your book into an audio book. Wow, there is technology wow. out there for that right now. Wow, well, see that, and that's worth the price of admission here today, Kevin. I, I learned some. <laughs> so if y'all want to know, it didn't cost uh, anything. <laughs> what's that? I said that it didn't cost anything. How about that? It didn't cost anything. That's why you, should, you guys should be listening to Business Amplify because we're here to amplify your business, and we're going to be giving you all kinds of uh, tidbits. So you definitely want to listen to from the beginning all the way until the end. That's right. So, That's right. Don, I do want to say thank you. I'm also going to plug myself for a moment. We are still looking for other people to uh, join us on this podcast. So if that's somebody that, that you'd be interested in, we do do uh, pre-interviews uh, to most people. And you can, uh, to, to go ahead and register for our pre-interview, just go to our website, which is at Optimal, O-P-T-I-M-A-L, Performance Academy dot O-R-G forward slash uh, pre-interview with no hyphen. So pre-interview. Again, it's Optimal Performance Academy dot org forward slash pre-interview. That's our calendar link. If you guys are somebody that who maybe wanted to talk a little bit more about writing your book, let's go ahead and, 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 and do a discovery session, a 45-minute complimentary discovery session. And that's also going to be at the same website at optimalperformanceacademy.org forward slash discovery. And Don, what's, one last time, how can they get uh, get a hold of you? Well, the uh, my my old-fashioned phone number if there is still, still people that want to use the phone uh, is 570-501-1200 and the uh, website for my business is gfs which stands for galade financial services hyphen advisors.com or dongalade.com g-a-l-a D-E. A lot of people have a tendency to spell my last name like the air freshener and they leave out the A. So, um, you know, I wish I had Procter Gamble's money. I think that's who invented Glade Air Freshener. I don't know. But, but uh, it's G-A-L-A-D-E, not G-L. But, uh, but Kevin, listen, I, I've actually had, um, you know, I've done a bunch of these podcasts and I could say that, that this one was actually like really fun. 
and just like mm. it just you know i didn't have to be so scripted and i didn't have to uh worry about what's going to say next and you were just a, an amazing uh, host with uh, prompting the right questions and uh, so i'm going to forward uh, you know this link over to all my business five friends as well and uh, i think they need to reach out to you because you definitely bring stuff to the table they should use well, do you appreciate it? And uh, and for the for the for, for the listeners out there, I want to say thank you for joining us today. And uh, uh, Don, before we go, you have any any last words before we say goodbye? Uh, well, if you want to write a book, just do it. You know, now you can you could do it the sloppy way like I have, um, or you could do it the fancy way like Kevin's going to teach you. But uh, you know, don't just 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 do it. You know, don't, don't, don't be afraid. I mean, you know, when, when, when I felt the, the first time I was going to write a book and it was going to have some things about God in it, I was like, you know, well, God, if you want me to do it, you'll, you'll give me the words. And, and he did. So that was that. Well, well there you go. You're, you heard it from uh, Don himself. So <laughs> uh, just go out there and, and write your book and, and don't be afraid to get help because you're That's not right. going to be the expert of, uh, on every aspect of it, especially if, it, if it's your first one. So Indeed. definitely go out there and do that. Thanks for tuning in to another empowering episode of Business Amplified with Kevin A. Dunlap. If you found value in today's insights, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the podcast. Keep amplifying your business. And remember, your success journey is our inspiration. Until next time on Business Amplified, go out there and make your business thrive. Thank you.